All right, guys, I'm going to give you a recap of our trip to Lake St. Clair in Michigan. So, we started off checking out some waypoints that the fish finder had because the previous owner had some waypoints marked on the lake. So, we pull up to the first spot, we catch a decent one, about two and a half pounds. So, we think it's going to be a pretty good day. And we go to these other waypoints. So, we catch a few small ones, you know, but we catch like six fish all day. And it's not really that great. So we don't really know what to do. We're kind of stumped. Everything we're hearing from people is 13 feet of water, 14 feet of water, edges of grass. So that's what we targeted all day long. And uh, it wasn't working. We saw some really big fish. And uh, we caught a couple small ones. You know, nothing over two and a half pounds of that day. So we run into somebody at the boat ramp though that I follow on YouTube, Extreme Outdoorsman. He gave us some tips. I, I ran into him and said, hey man, send me a message on Instagram. So I sent him a message said, hey, we're kind of lost, but you know, I'm not looking for you know, locations or baits. I just want to know, you know how, are, how are you doing? You know, maybe point us in the right direction. He said, look for rocks and toss a net rig. So the next day we spent all day looking for rocks and that lake has a lot of grass. So it took us about eight hours to find some really, really good stuff. We spent, I don't know, first hour kind of over in Canada and then the next over, uh, over on this deep spot, this deep channel that ran through there. And we caught two on a jerk bait, but you know, it wasn't it wasn't on fire, and we weren't finding what we wanted. We weren't finding those rocks. So Cameron says, "Let's go check out the grass lines again." So we go offshore looking for grass. We catch one little guy. And I'm like, "This isn't a deal," and we waste about eight hours. So I was like, "All right, let's just head back, go back inside, come up with a new game plan." Well, we're on our way back, and I spy a uh, a seawall this marina dock with a seawall and uh, I didn't say anything I just pulled over and I was like okay I'm just gonna mark fish see if I can mark fish and because uh, I got to the point I wasn't fishing if we weren't marking fish and we weren't marking fish anywhere so we pull up to the seawall I mark fish immediately I was like okay okay you know maybe that's a fluke so we go on down a little ways and I mark fish again so I pull around that seawall and we start fishing that seawall again. And I catch one, and then we get around to the other side, I catch another one, and then I catch another one. And we start going through there and looking, and it's, it's real grassy, but then dropped off from like eight feet to 12 feet. I'm like, okay, okay, this is cool. So we go toss some baits around that deeper stuff. We don't catch anything there, but we start making our way out and looking around, and the water's so clear you can see bottom. And we're seeing a lot of grass, and then it gets darker, we can't see. And then we started, we stumbled upon some rocks. And we're like, okay, this looks like small rock territory. This looks pretty good. And uh, we catch one. I was like, okay, okay. We're, I think we're in an area. So we move along and we aim at this buoy. And we keep going out. We keep kind of zigzagging, you know, six feet of water, seven feet of water, eight feet of water. And it was more. It was more than eight feet of water that had the fish. So we started uh, fishing that, sticking on that contour line and following it all the way down this bay. And we, we keep seeing more rock and isolated rock piles with sand, sand patches in between. And we're like, okay, this looks really, really good. So we start fishing and we catch, we start catching. We really, really nailed the small ones. And uh, we didn't really see any big ones till on further down and uh, we were we we found some big fish that we saw with our own eyes we marked them on the on the fish finder and then we dropped a waypoint on top of them so the plan was we'd circle around come back and make long casts on them and try to catch them and uh, we uh, we we marked some fish and we keep drifting on down we decided to eat some lunch so we eat lunch and then we get we get ready to get going again. Cameron stands up and it's right off the bow of the boat. He looks down and there's two giants sitting there. So we mark them. So 
we're, we're getting excited because we're, we're, we're seeing fish now. We're in an area we weren't in an area before that had fish. So we're getting pretty excited. So we circle around, and sure enough, we, we long cast on our points. We catch two really nice ones, one about four pounds and one about three pounds. And uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun. So the game plan for the next day was to go in there and do the exact same thing all day long fishing that bay. Go shallow, go deep. That didn't exactly happen because someone forgot the book plug. That was me. So we fished like four hours that morning. We catch two, about three pounds. And, uh, you know, we're feeling pretty good about it. We were going to circle around. We had some followers too. Some guys uh, that weren't catching them saw us catching them. And they kind of they kind of fall where we were going. So it was it was probably a. I'm just glad that we weren't the ones following them, and uh, I'd I'd rather be followed than trying to follow somebody else because, you know, it's hard to fish somebody else's spots. It is. So we had this one guy. He came back every time we circled around. He'd come up right next to us, about 150 yards or so maybe a bit further than that, every time. We'd turn on the motor, we'd go back around to drift back over those fish. He'd come right with us. He never caught anything either. So, I don't know. Should have helped him out, I don't know. So the boat plug, yeah, that thing, that's, that really sucked. We uh, tried to get on plane to go back over, and the boat goes, whoa. And uh, I knew immediately what that was. So I jumped in, put the plug in, and we eventually got on plane and uh, ran back to the boat ramp, pulled out, drained the boat, and I was thinking about calling it quits after that. But Karen really wanted to go back out, and I was like, okay, we'll go. So we head back out, and there's this little bitty boat coming this way. And from the looks of it, you can tell the boat's really heavy. And he had a lot of, he had a lot of keel in the water. And we didn't realize this until we were getting close. The waves he was putting out were huge rollers, and we got we got freaking rocked. We broke the mount for the transducer and the mount for the uh, fish finder. So we called it quits after that because we couldn't troll around with the fish finder dangling down there. Yeah, it was it was a rough trip, but definitely going to be a return trip. A lot of fun. A lot of smallmouth, different different fishing for sure, a lot of offshore stuff. It was really, really weird time because all the fish were post-spawn and they were super scattered. They didn't get into that summer feeding pattern yet. They were just here and there everywhere. I mean, there was fish swimming in, you know, below the surface at three feet over top of 13 feet of water and there were fish sitting on bottom in six feet of water. So. It, it was a really weird, weird time of year. Uh, fishing was just tough, but we managed to find find a few and get on some. So, all in all, good trip. So I'm gonna cut in the pictures that we took from the smallmouth that we caught not on camera, because we caught we caught a couple nice ones that weren't on camera. So I'm gonna put those pictures, like maybe a couple other things. Check that out, subscribe to the channel, and uh, drop a comment and a like. Let us know what you think.